culture wars represent one of the biggest business risks in current year. You you just now realized it, huh? The corporate culture wars represent one of the biggest risks of the year, Eurasia Group President Ian Bremmer writes in his new year lease report. Why it matters. In a particularly fraught election year, U.S. businesses and brands are more vulnerable to political attacks. No, no, no. They, they inserted themselves into politics. Like, like keep, that, keep that in mind. They inserted themselves into it. They made themselves political. And then they bitch about it when, when they get blowback. Like, well, who would have known that insulting half my customer base would cost me half my customer base? Wow. I thought for sure that some phantom wider audience was going to show up and take their place. Now, these can directly impact the company's reputation, its ability to do business in certain states, and corporate affairs teams are the first line of defense. So be smart. In current year, minus five, the business roundtable, a collective of 200 CEOs from America's top companies, declare the corporations should do more than just make profit. They should also support the well-being of customers, employees, suppliers, and communities. Then why have you been doing the exact opposite of that? Yeah, they're they're always they're always lying like this. They're gonna spin it now, like, oh, we we thought we were doing good. What? How the fuck do you think it's good to cancel people for disagreeing with you? You you think telling customers, oh, we don't want people like you as customers? You think that's supporting the well being of customers? What the fuck is wrong with you, idiots? Well, if you're going to treat us like that, like, and, and that's what I'm, I'm just going to remind you guys. If any company ever told you they don't want you as a customer, you should never be their customer again. Even if they do a complete about face and they start making things you like again, until, uh, until the executives get on their knees and personally suck your dick and apologize, and publicly fire everyone involved in that divisive shit over the years? Don't forgive them. Don't give them another chance. Don't let them just silently walk back like nothing happened. Oh, hell no. If they publicly denounced you and publicly stated they don't want you as a customer, then they better fucking publicly apologize and publicly suck your dick and publicly make it right. I know for sure, like, none of these companies are getting my money again. Like PlayStation, for example. They made it loud and clear in 2018 they don't want me as a customer. So point fucking taken. I've avoided, uh, for the past six years, I've avoided giving them money and I'll continue for the rest of my life. I don't need those pieces of shit in my life. And if they do start going back on the censorship and releasing good stuff again and, and releasing it on PC, I'll just sail the seven seas for it. I'm going to make damn sure that not a cent of my money ends up in PlayStation's pockets again. They made it fucking personal. So they got no right to bitch when I treat it that way. And since then, events such as the pandemic, racial reckoning, and the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the ongoing wars across the globe has put that commitment to the test. Yeah, And that's what I love. All these companies that were just paying lip service to the woke shit, now the woke are expecting them to actually you know, live up to what they said they were going to do. And yeah, it's, it's funny. They deserve it. So, yes, but uh, the past year has also shown how courts, elected officials, and activists can punch back against corporate initiatives they disagree with. And never mind, uh, like they're not going to mention how how uh, what was it? Uh, you know, courts, elected officials, and activists were pushing them into it in the first place, though. Yeah, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis attacked Disney after it opposed the state's parental rights and indoctrination bill, which critics referred to as "Don't Say Gay." No, 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 Disney openly declared war on DeSantis and said, oh yeah, we, we are, don't worry, we're Disney. We're going to take care of it. We're going to fix Florida. And Florida was like, who the fuck do you think you are? I, I, I think, hey, Brand, I think it's time you remembered your fucking place. You know, all the special treatment we've been giving you, I think it's time we revoked that. Uh, seven attorneys general from red states order target to remove specific Pride Month merchandise claiming you violated the state's child protection laws. Yeah, and and let, let's not forget states like California and New York, 
they they, they made it a requirement that that uh, if you want some uh, if if you're in 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 a hedge fund an investment fund of some kind and you want access to the state's uh, retirement funds you, know, the, you they had all these fucking ESG requirements so all that that the the right wing the red states are doing now they're just doing the exact opposite it's like okay if the blue states are going to legally mandate ESG and and all the businesses are going to start doing it because they want to keep doing business in those states fine if that's how you want to play it we're going to do the same thing we're going to legally mandate that that you don't have ESG now you have to pick a fucking side because as I've been saying from the start, the biggest problem with with the the right and 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 just consumers in general is like what what's the punishment for these companies for for siding against them? Like well, what's what's the punishment? Yeah, we're seeing long term. I, I guess enough idiots finally wake up that it does damage. But like in the short term, if the woke hate mob is reading about something. And they side against the woke hate mob. The, the the hate mob will keep you know giving them a PR black eye, like you know, g- going on months, years, continue to do damage to the company. But what would happen uh, if if they side with the woke hate mob? What's the other side gonna do? Nothing. Just shut the fuck up and silently keep consuming. <laughs> And that's why they've been siding against us for so long. Because every fucking time people like me kept suggesting, like, it, it, well, I did a video uh, almost a decade ago now called the counter boycott. Like, so, so the, the, the whole point of that was if, if you got far left hate mobs out there shrieking like, oh, either you do what we want or we'll boycott you. That, that I was suggesting we co- go out and say, if you do give in to them, then we will boycott you. So pick a side, bitch. And uh, I was called an extremist by our side for, for viewpoints like that. And, and those all those dickless motherfuckers don't even realize it's because of fucking idiots like them that, that nobody ever sided with us. There was no downsides to siding with our enemies because we never did shit. Whereas if if they sided with us, they got attacked to to hell and back. Oh, God. I, I, I am just so glad, though, that even the normies are starting to wake the fuck up. I've even seen normies talk or heard normies talking like, oh, yeah, this this thing looks woke. Yeah, it's probably shit. Like there, even the normies are actively avoiding things that, that that even give off an air of being woke. And, and now the cucks on our side are singing a completely different tune. N- now they're already getting all scared. Like, well, well, we we don't want the pendulum to go too far back the other way in the sense that uh, th- th- that that uh, mud diversity is completely re- eliminated. Like, no bullshit. I think that needs to happen. That needs to happen for like maybe ten years or so to teach these fuckers a lesson. And then we can slowly start easing it back in naturally. But yeah, after what they fucking put us through for, for the past few years, they, they, they need to go through it themselves for a little while. And California governor or emperor Newsom attempted to ban Walgreens for not distributing uh, mif- mifepristone, a drug used uh, in, medica- in medication abortions. They also banned a certain drug that uh, prevented the coof, but that's that's a, that's a different story there. State of play, ooh. Now, following the political pressures, companies have started to slow walk or reframe their ESG strategies. Now, now a lot of them are like, like uh, so people try to make a big deal about Squeenix and and, and how how they they removed their their uh, you know, uh, ethics committee like pro censorship position like from their website. That doesn't mean that position doesn't exist anymore. That doesn't mean they're they're shutting down their censorship committee. All it means is that they're hiding it. Like unless Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out and and, and it, it's uh, everything the first one should have been on steroids. Like they they walk back all the fucking censorship. 
and, and go all in on giving fans what they want. You cannot trust this company. And I, plus, many are taking a more reserved approach and weighing in on social geopolitical matters, opting for strictly internal messages as opposed to loud public statements. Oh, even internal messaging. If your company is internally woke, that, that that's more than enough because, you know, just by default, that's going to drive away everyone with actual fucking talent. Yeah, so what they're saying, firms operating in both uh, blue and red states, which is most of Fortune 500, will struggle to adopt a cohesive nationwide strategies that uh, satisfy Democrats and Republicans alike, writes Bremer. Yeah. And, and it's their fucking fault. As soon as the Democrats, as soon as the blue states started mandating this ESG shit, the companies should have put their foot down and pulled out of those states. When, like, when it was just one or two states, they should have just pulled out. They should have sent the fucking message. But because the right are a bunch of dickless cucks, they, they were like, ah, what's what's the harm in siding with the left? The right ain't going to do shit. And then years later, the right finally takes their balls out of their wives' purses and, and decides to do something. And yeah, now now how, how do you get yourself out of this situation? You, you can't be neutral anymore. You have to pick a side. Increasingly, these companies will face tougher choice, comply with laws and regulations that offend their corporate and customer values and risk getting canceled or exit certain state markets. And with the GDP of some U.S. states rivaling that of sovereign countries, California's economy is bigger than Airstrip 1's, Texas' GDP tops Italy, and uh, New York's economy is bigger than Russia's. Uh, no, these are expensive decisions. Yeah. And they, 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 they put themselves in there. They're the ones that decided to jump in on this shit. They, they openly declared themselves woke. They picked their side. And now they're going to bitch that they're paying the price for it? <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Now, it'll be no worry to see uh, how companies engage or disengage with hot-button issues and the impact their stakeholders and uh, how these responses vary from years prior. Now, here, here's what I want to see. Here's, here's what I'm predicting. I think that the existing big corpos are a lost cause. They're, they're as good as dead. Just write them off as a loss. They went too far. Like, they went all in on this woke shit. It's in their hiring. They filled their ranks with woke activists. They got too buddy-buddy with woke politicians that they now depend on. Even if they wanted to course correct, they couldn't anymore. So the best thing that that can happen is for all these old companies to just go out of business and die and be replaced by newer competitors that aren't pieces of shit. And these newer competitors can then like in the in when it comes to entertainment, they can take over the rights and actually do justice to these IPs everyone's so protective over. Like how awesome would it be if Disney went bankrupt and went away and like say Universal took over uh Dis the Disney theme parks and fixed them up? And uh, and so some competent company got the Star Wars IP and decanonized all everything Disney did and gave us like the proper sequel trilogy based off of Lucas's notes. That's what we need to happen.